Chapter 19 The fog lay thick above the ground. Despite the late morning, the sun was filtered by the thick trees, muffling the ambient noise of the forest. Everything was still and quiet, even the horses. Gabe loved winters in the North Woods. He breathed deeply, listening to the meditative sound of happy animals chewing and letting out deep, contented breaths. It was ASMR for the soul. Fortune was a little more restless than the others. He'd been a little off for the last week. He paced the fence periodically like he was looking for something, or someone. He must be missing Imogen terribly, and Gabe could completely relate. She'd only been gone a few days, but it was too long. They were both getting restless, waiting for her to return to them. They'd spoken every day and texted, Imogen keeping him apprised of her packing progress and Cookie's silly antics. Neither of them mentioned his house guest. It was a cloud hanging over their relationship that he didn't know how to handle. To be honest, Gabe was impressed with how Imogen had taken everything in stride. She trusted him and allowed him his independence, just as she craved her own. It was incredibly sexy. Gabe wished he could have gone with her to see where she grew up, to see where and what had molded her into the amazing person she is. He knew how lucky he was to have her in his life. He'd have to do something about his schedule so they could see each other more when she returned. After all, what was the point of being the boss when you couldn't manage your own calendar? Gabe didn't want her to feel like she wasn't a priority to him. When he spoke with her yesterday, Imogen had said she'd be home in a day or two. It couldn't come quickly enough for him. It looked like Fortune might feel the same way. Is this what it felt like to be in love? He thought about her constantly, smiled at her shenanigans, and for the first time in his life, didn't enjoy coming home to an empty house. Gabe walked back into the house and watched as Lopez came out of the guest room, dressed in workout gear. So far, she hadn't had any desire to leave the house, staying in and working out or watching television for most of the day. Despite him bringing it up previously, nothing had changed. It was time for her next steps. He wasn't helping her by letting her hide here, he knew. She had today, then he'd push her out of the nest she'd made for herself and force her outside her comfort zone. Lopez, I'm going out for a ride on Rowdy. I'll be gone an hour or two. Anita looked outside. The weather didn't look great, but what did she know? In this weather? Isn't there a storm coming? Gabe looked at his watch. Not for a couple hours yet. I've got some time before the snow hits and I could use a little exercise, honestly. Okay, no worries. I'll just hold down the fort here. Gabe nodded. Basically, she'd sit and do nothing. It was like fear had frozen her in place. This wasn't the same person he had fought beside in Afghanistan. That person was brave, first to jump into battle, and was always looking to give 100% in everything she did. Whoever her ex was, he'd completely shaken her confidence. Are you going to be okay while I get out for a bit, clear my head? The weather had been cold, and the footing was frozen. Today was the first opportunity to ride while the weather cooperated. He'd love to get out into the fresh air, but he'd stay if he was needed. Anita shook her head. No, go on. No sense in both of us staying here. Besides, if it snows like it's supposed to, we might not be able to get out for a few days. Gabe couldn't think of anything he wanted less than to be locked in a house with his friend for days at a time. He'd much rather have Imogen snuggled against him. He hoped she arrived before the storm but he hadn't heard from her yet. Without another word, Gabe donned his hat, winter duster, and boots, and went to saddle his horse. Rowdy, for his part, was excited for the opportunity to stretch his legs, barely containing his excitement. He shifted his weight constantly and repeatedly nudged Gabe with his head, something he didn't normally allow. He understood, though, so he let it go this once. Quickly and deftly, he tacked him up. Dexter was still relaxing, but Fortune continued to pace. He probably sensed the storm coming now that Gabe thought about it. Some horses were very weather-sensitive. Before long, Gabe mounted. He and the Mustang took the deer trail to Joe's cabin, just to check and see if Imogen had arrived before they took a short trail ride. It was early, but there was a chance she could have tried to miss the commuter traffic outside NYC and left before dawn. He wouldn't go far, he promised himself, as he looked at the clouds rolling in. The weather and the footing weren't appropriate for a long, fast ride anyway. 
He pointed Rowdy in the cabin's direction, and they were off. A little quality time together was good for the soul. Gabe was disappointed that Imogen and Cookie hadn't returned. But when he stopped over, Joe had assured him she should be there before the storm was set to hit. He really hoped so. He didn't want her driving a truck filled with all her belongings in bad weather. As much as he wanted her there, it would be better if she put off the drive until after the storm. Rowdy was content as he got a chance to stretch his legs, his stride relaxed and his head low as he left the trailhead and headed back to his home. Just about halfway through the woods, he lifted his head and stopped short, snorting. The horse's breath was visible in the cold, and his rider froze. Gabe trusted his horse's instincts and looked in the direction his horse's ears were pointed, listening carefully. Just there, he'd thought it was the wind, but it was the sound of a horse screaming. Not just any horse. Fortune. With a squeeze, he urged Rowdy towards home as quickly and safely as he could, panic gripping him with a fist around his heart. As they emerged from the trees, Gabe slowed the Mustang and looked around before exiting cover. All appeared quiet, with the exception of the dark thoroughbred, who was bucking and galloping straight for the gate, only to make a sliding stop before he hit the electric wire. There were no cars in the driveway, and the house appeared quiet. Still, he trusted the animal's instincts. Something was very, very wrong. His training kicked in, and a calm settled over him. He kept Rowdy to the tree line, tying a rein around a thick branch and trusting him to stay safely under the foliage. If all was well, he'd come right back to untack him. He always kept emergency items in his saddlebags. He never knew what you'd find in the backwoods and retrieved a long hunting knife and his gun. Crouching low, he listened at the edge of the woods. The trail was on the other side of the house from the paddocks. Dexter prowled restlessly, very unlike the steady horse he'd come to know. While Fortune was prone to theatrics, the Mustang was not. If he was upset, there was something very wrong. Making himself as small as possible, he ran quietly toward the side of the house, placing himself up against the trellis surrounding the porch. He sidled towards the front door. Now that he was closer, he could see it was slightly ajar, the light from the foyer casting a small slice across the porch steps. If the horses hadn't warned him, the open door would have. There was no way Lopez would have left it unlocked, much less open. Resigned, he crept up the stairs, keeping to the side and avoiding the creaky wood on the second step. Rather than go directly to the door and the unknown, he moved toward the side window, keeping out of sight, and glancing quickly at the interior scene. He'd never been so happy to have an open floor plan before. What he saw sent shivers through his body. He sent an SOS text to the sheriff, who was luckily a buddy of his. It would take him at least 30 minutes to arrive, depending on where he was, but he needed the backup. Things were about to get really bad. Anita's past had come to call. <laughs>